They asked his wife, Aisha radiyallahu tabaraka wa ta'ala anha, tell us about the character of the Rasul. So she said, his character was the Quran. If I could paraphrase our mother Aisha, he was the Quran walking. So that you could see how to implement, how to live, how to embody the guidance of the Lord and through which find success. Yet when the prophet passed away, she was 18. She lived, you know, into her latter days and had a lot of time to think and reflect. Yet on all the reflection, the conclusion she comes to is that he was the Quran walking. And that is the miracle of his character. Humankind arrive on this planet. The Quran says, لا تعلمون شيئا, Not knowing anything. Clean slate. They navigate through life. In the absence of divine guidance, blind. So they scream in this pain and they are battered by the other and bruised in the other and they go through life through trial and error. There is a lot in life we need help with. If you look at the status of humankind currently, you can't deny that mankind needs help. We need help almost in every facet of life. We thought that we lacked wealth and we're unhappy because of that. Wealth came, we're still unhappy. We thought that it is the weather and if we could control that, we would be happy. Today you sit in an auditorium with a click of a button, you're in the middle of summer, the breeze of winter comes, yet still man is unhappy. There is so much you need help with. What you need is light. So out of his infinite mercy, Allah Rabbul Izzah sent you light. Qala ta'ala, ah, verily they came to you from your Lord light. And light in this instance is in the person of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the divine conduct and character of the Rasul in a book clear and vivid. So divine intervention came, guidance came, light came. But Allah Rabbul Izzya knew your psychology enough to know that just by giving you a book, it wouldn't mean much to you. You can only become what you can see. So Allah Rabbul Izzya sent you a prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and he Embodied divine revelation. Ahmad Khadija radiyallahu anha was by consensus older than the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was entrusted with divine guidance. You know the story. He went to Ghara Hira, so he came perturbed and anxious and in cold sweat and shivering down the mountain into the house and says, Zammiluni, Zammiluni, Dathiruni, Dathiruni, cover me, cloak me, wrap me up. So the wife Khadija, Khadija radiyallahu anha, wraps him and cloaks him. And then when the emotion subsides, asks him what, what happened. So he says, I don't know, ya Khadija, I think I am bewitched. Something evil has befallen me. So what does she say? Ah, no, Wallahi, Allah will never forsake you. You're a man who helps the poor, shelters the destitute, gives uh, housing to the traveler, uh, links the ties of kith and kin. Do you understand all the good that she knew about him? She throws these praises at his feet, her conclusion being the heavens would never let you be disgraced. Like never could a spirit of weakness befall you. You see again, a wife 
intimately aware of his conduct, testifies in privacy to the awesomeness of his character. That is why he is the perfect role model. Can I give you another one so you don't say there's, you know, love involved and in, in husband and wife relationship? Zayd ibn Haritha. This is fascinating. Zayd ibn Haritha comes from, you know, what they call the ancient Arabs. Qahtani Arabs. So he was out living with his tribe far away from Mecca. And the story differs, but the gist of it is he went to visit his maternal uncles. Someone raided the village and they took people and parts of the people they took was young Zaid and they tied him up and sold him in a slave market. So Zaid ibn Haritha is about eight years old and the nephew of Khadija purchases him and gives it to his auntie, to Khadija, as a marriage gift. So Khadija radiallahu anha gave the young lad to the Prophet sallallahu He will be uh, at your service and so on. And this is before Islam. He lived with the Prophet sallallahu and Mecca is a place where the other Arabs would come and visit. You know, whether for Hajj or business or tribal uh, affiliations. And young Zaid is on the lookout to see someone from his tribe. And eventually, sometimes later, he noticed two men dressed in the garb of his people. So he realized this is from my tribe. So he went to them. And uh, amazing culture, the Arab culture. Um, how do I convey my sentiments? He came up with a couple of couplets of poetry, told them, go to my people and say this. Basically, it said, listen, don't tire your camel searching for me. I am next to the house of God with the noblest of families. That's it. So they went back and told the father. You know, we saw a young lad. This is what he sent as a message. So the father said, oh my God, my son, he's alive. We found him took his wealth, what he could muster, took his brother with him, made the long journey to Mecca, came to Mecca asking, where is, where is this family that has this young lad? Eventually they said, see that one there, that's Abu Qasim, Muhammad, the son of Abdullah. Ask him. So they come and uh, they meet the Rasul. And they say, Ya Muhammad, you're from a noble family. Um, our son was taken, you know, by deception and by force. And he's in your care and return him to us and ask for whatever money you want, we will repay. So the character of a Rasul, and although not a prophet at this stage, he says, I will do something better. I will call Zaid and ask him if he knows you guys and if he wants to go with you if he wants to go khalas don't pay me anything go but if he chooses me over you then i am not one to give up someone that has preferred me over you so they said this is fair so young zaid was summoned zaid cam zaid do you know these two yes this is my uncle that is my father so the rasul said zaid they have come to take you back. If you wish to go, you're free to go and there's no need for recompense. Uh, if you wish to stay with me, you're free to do so. So Zaid looked and Zaid looked and Zaid looked. And he says, I choose to stay with you. Or for mountains of gold, I wouldn't leave you. And imagine Arab culture. No, I am your father and your uncle and you have chosen this person who is not related to you and no link. What an embarrassment, you know, what have you done, Zaid? So Zaid said, he has been to me a father and a mother, a tribesman and a confidant. I could never give him up. So the Prophet, they're about to argue back. So the Rasul said, I'll give you something better. Took the father, took Zaid went into the haram, got near the Kaaba and called out, O men of Quraysh, O men of Quraysh, bear witness 
that from today onwards, this Zaid is my son. And from now on, he will inherit from me and I will inherit from him. So honoring him to the level of an adopted son and moving the stigma of slavery. Now the parents are happy. The Zaid has been accepted as a son into a family much nobler than theirs because, you know, the prophets family is from the Quraysh and the Khadimeen al-Bayt. But notice the point, dear ones. An alien individual not related to you stays with you for a while and so overwhelmed by your personality that would go and forego his own family just to have the honor of your companionship. You see, he is the ultimate role model. There's another thing to note here. Notice Khadija radiallahu anha. She is a, a lady who had two husbands before the Prophet. In this community here and around the world, a person with, you know, a lady that has had two husbands and they say one died and one she was divorced from or both died and the scholars differ but irrespective. Society today unfortunately will deem her that the best days are gone. Yet the magic is when her path crosses the path of the Prophet وسلم, and she is touched by the blessing of the Rasul. This ordinary lady who would otherwise be unheard of and unknown of becomes a, a lady who today in 2019, I call her my mother and you call her your mother. But she, is, she comes to the Rasul carrying a platter of food. And Jibreel came from above the seven heavens. Ya Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Muhammad, Khadija is about to enter upon you. She's carrying a platter of food. Allah has sent me from above the seven heavens to convey his exclusive greetings to this lady. So when she comes, in tell her Allah sends his salam and also give her my salam as well and not only that give her the glad tidings of a house in Jannah made from a single exclusive pearl what was what what happened the only thing that happened is her life crossed paths with the life of this messenger Aisha radiallahu tabaraka wa ta'ala wallahi al-azim history would not have known her had her path not crossed the path of Muhammad and Zayd ibn Haritha history would not have known if his path hadn't crossed the path of the Prophet and forget about individuals the Arab race wouldn't have been known had it not been for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and I say this to you with and Allah is my witness as his life touched their lives and they reached the pinnacles of human achievements. Let his life touch your lives. You will reach the pinnacle of human achievements for your time and patience. I thank you. May the heavens guide and guard you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.